All right, so let's get started. Can you guys hear me in the back? Louder? More louder? That's good enough? Okay, great. Good. And you guys have to put up with me for the next seven and a half minutes or eight minutes. I'm going to talk real fast because I got another session. But I'll have Arvind cover the nuances of memory tiering, right? So welcome to today's session where we talk about capacity and providing capacity and TCO, right? To applications using the VMware software memory architecture of the framework, right? So my name is Sudhir and I have my compadre, my colleague in crime here, Arvind, right? And he's going to bring up the rear and he's the product manager for memory tiering. So if you guys have those questions, save it for later. Hound him, ask him everything, right? Don't ask me any questions, but if you do want to talk to me, come to the exhibition hall, right? There is a draw at 445 for a pair of, I think there was four sneakers. Beautiful. If you don't want it, just give me a ticket. I'll take it. I love free stuff. Okay, good. Done. All right. So we talk about the motivation, right? And let me start with the motivation as to why one should even go with memory tiers, right? I mean, you guys are VMware, you've been using VMware technology for so many years. I'm not going to insult you by talking about vMotion, DRS, and so on and so forth. But let's just assume things works, right? And we can take it for granted. And I'm going to move to the VMware memory tiering aspect of this discussion where, and there's a reason why the memory tiering is so important. See, what happens is with the advent of Intel DC opt-in, and I get it, right? Intel DC opt-in is gone. Right? At some point of time, we're looking at CXL and Arvind will be talking about CXL use cases here as well. Right, But the value proposition of tier 2 memory is very important. Right, If you want to solve this problem using hardware, of course, Intel had that memory mode where you have the hardware, the tier 2 memory, you had DRAM and you had some kind of caching happening there. Right, What happens is if you were to defer that kind of mapping, the cold and the hot blocks to the VMware layer, we do a much better job at doing it. Reason being, we know your workloads much better than any hardware would know your workloads, right? So by simply by throwing a blanket of abstraction between these disaggregated components of memory tiers, we are able to provide a much bigger contiguous memory chunk which comprises of DRAM and tier 2 memory. So from an application perspective, that's what an application guy needs to know at the end of the day. I need so much amount of vCPU, I need so much IOPS, I need so much network, and just give me some chunk of RAM. I really don't care where it comes from, but make sure that my hot blocks and the cold blocks are taken care of by VMware. And VMS says, absolutely, let me throw the blanket around for you and let me do that, right? Again, I'm going to come up with a use case here, and you can extend this use case to the SQL of the world, the SAP of the world, the Java of the world, or what, whatever you have running, right? Simply search and replace Oracle, and that's it, your problem is solved, right? But I was joking about it. So I'm going to give you a bit of a use case here. Essentially what happens, and I did speak to it, right? VMware vSphere has that intelligence to map that cold in the hot tier and do that mapping, right? So let me cut to the chase. Let me cut to this. What we did was we did just like a, we did a lab study, right? It was a lab, it was a controlled environment. So we had two ESXi servers, right? The server on the left-hand side here, right? And the server on the right-hand side set up exactly the same. Four socket, 24 cores per socket, which means four NUMA nodes, every NUMA node, having 24 cores, every NUMA node has 384 gigs of DRAM, 768 gigs of tier 2 memory, which means 1.5 terabyte DRAM, 3 terabyte persistent memory. Good. So we have this server here on the left hand side. Server to the right hand side set up exactly the same, ESXi patch, version, everything, 24, 24 cores per socket, 4 sockets, 1.5 DRAM, but hey, it doesn't have tier 2 memory, right? So no tier 2 memory. Yes, tier 2 memory, let the games begin. And what we did was, and this is a bit of an illustration as to how NUMA looks from an ESXi perspective. Back to the point here, you had four sockets, like I said, every socket had 384 gigs of DRAM, 768 gigs of Peter memory, and you will see where I'm going with this entire illustration here, right? In the next slide. What we did was, and again, remember, this is to prove that you're able to increase the capacity and achieve Good TCO, lower TCO, when you start piling on tier 2 memory to that memory bank, so way you don't have to dip into your pocket when you go to the market and buy expensive DRAM, right? I mean, how many times you have to go back to the IT department saying, well, you know, you guys gave me 512, that's great, I need a terabyte. Well, you guys gave me a terabyte, I need a 2 TB. And the guy says, why don't you come back and talk to me a month from now? Let me just open up a PO or a requisition order and you got to pay so much of money, right? What if I had tier 2? What if I simply had tier 2 memory, which is slower, which is, has a higher latency, but when you look at the overall picture, 
I am able to run more workload. See, at the end of the day, it's workload, workload, workload. Run more workload. Run more aggregated workload. If I'm able to do that, my problem is solved. Correct? And that's what we're trying to do here. So two virtual machines on the software memory tiering side. Correct? One such virtual machine on the non-software memory tiering side. And what we did was we pinned this virtual machine to NUMA node 0. One may ask, why did you pin it? Because I don't like the NUMA affinity and all that stuff. I wanted to dispel with the NUMA noise, right? So two virtual machines pinned to NUMA node 0. One virtual machine pinned to NUMA, to NUMA node 0 for the DRAM as well, right? Two on one side, one on this side. And this is exactly how it looks if I look for the entire stack. Oracle, virtual machine, vSphere level, if I look at it, this is how it looks like, right? And basically, my goal here is to see if I'm able to get aggregate throughput, if I'm able to get aggregate performance, right? If I'm able to run more workload, more transactions, more SQL. See, what happens is the world that I come from, the Oracle world, if you guys talk to the SQL DBAs, right? Or MongoDB, Cassandra DB, they'll basically throw things at you like, I was able to run more transactions per second. I want to run more SQLs per second. I want more logical IOs. I want more physical IOs. Oh, I want a lot of stuff, right? Yeah, as well. But that's basically what your SQL or your Oracle guys will tell you that. And that's exactly what we wanted to find out. Can we get more execute per SQL when I start piling all this virtual machine? And the answer is yes. The load, the uh, synthetic load generator that we use here, it's called SLOB, stands for Silly Little Oracle Benchmark. The only thing it does is stresses I.O., whether it's memory or whether it's to the disk, right? Again, this is the read-only test that we did here. If you look at the aggregate software tier, which means you're putting virtual machine one, virtual machine two, the metrics come out much higher than what you would on the DRAM case. And probably one of you would stand up and say, oh, it's so obvious, man. You're piling up virtual machines, right? You are, you will get more sequels per second. Exactly. That's what I want to do. That's exactly what I want to do. I don't want to spend money to go buy expensive DRAM. I am cheap. I want to buy cheaper tier two memory. I want to have more aggregate memory. I want to pile on more virtual machine. Let's say it's a dev test use case or a functional or a non-prod use case. Run a lot of lot of VMs, right? I don't have to go back to my manager and say, give me more servers, give me more RAM. That guy is happy and I'm happy, right? So that's the whole that's the whole thing for today. Again, the ball doesn't stop here. If you just look at the Oracle from an Oracle perspective, you also have to look from a guest operating system perspective, right? Most of you guys are Linux guys, Windows guys, right? So you know the percentage idle. You know what percentage idle stands for? Which means I'm doing nothing from a guest operating system perspective. Give me something to do. When we ran the virtual machines on the software memory tiering, because the hypervisor took care of the memory block, the shifting back and forth, the guest operating system had more idle cycles, which means if I was able to run X, I can probably run X plus two, right? Or even two X or three X or four X. So case in point being, with the intelligent tiering handled by the hypervisor, now the guest operating system, the Oracle database can basically do what it is born and bred to do, run workloads, right? I don't have to worry about thinking, oh, where are the cold blocks? Oh, where are the hot blocks? Maybe I need to do this, maybe I need to do that. That's what Arvind, his team, the memory tiering team does, and me as an Oracle guy, I just have to worry about saying, I just need so much amount of VRAM, and that's it, I'm done. Arvind, you, forget, you worry about the memory tearing aspect, right? And this is where I'm gonna hand, hand off to him. He is the SME on memory tearing, and he'll talk about that. Thanks, Arvind. Thanks. How are you all doing? So, uh, I'm, I lead uh, some of the product management efforts. Um, I think I'll have to scream a little more because I can hear the guy um, next to me talking louder. So, I'll have to really use a higher voice. I'll have to outcompete him. Um, and and I, I think this is the best time to do a session like this because, you know, this is Vegas. Everybody is, you know, uh, there is a hangover time in the morning and then everybody starts waking up really, you know, at this point of time. So, this is perfect. So, thanks for attending this session. And, um, you know, I'll, um, I'll be talking a bit about, you know, what is the motivation, right? So, um, if, if you look across the board um, at some of the VMware customers, um, a lot of our customers actually end up over committing memory, right? I mean, because they, they want security. I mean, they want some insurance. They don't want to be in a position where they, uh, where they see that their workloads are, you know, uh, actively using a lot of their memory and then they run into performance issues. So what they end up doing is, you know, for the worst case scenarios, 
they actually end up over committing their memory and over provisioning right so now we have a situation where you know maybe 90% of the time the memory is just sitting idle right because what we have seen from most of our customers is that most of your workloads active memory which is you know actively being used is just about 50 to 60% of your overall capacity which means that any, at any point if you look at your workloads it's only using 50% of the overall memory actively so which leads to the point that you know we can really make use of a memory tier which is slower less expensive and which can save costs for you right i mean um, i don't know how many of you know dram is expensive um, show of hands uh, did, did you all know that dram is the most expensive components in in your server infrastructure okay so that's good actually a lot of you know that dram is very expensive right so now uh, this brings me to the point why we 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 need like a memory tier right and vmware is the right platform because you know it virtualizes everything like sudhir mentioned you basically you know don't even have to bother looking underneath right i mean esx as an operating system as a hypervisor manages all the tiers and it makes sure that it just gives you a big memory right and which you can allocate to your vms and for each of the vms we monitor closely what kind of workloads are running how they are using the memory pages and how you can actually tier the uh, the cold pages to a slower tier right and then bring the hot pages to the uh, to the faster dram right so that's what we do and if you see um, the other point in this is that you know for a lot of you um, we have found that you know across our customer base cpu is actually you have spare cpu capacities right so what that means is that you know there is a memory cpu imbalance right and memory tiering can bring that imbalance and um, to the uh, and and correct it right in the sense that now with the second tier you could actually bring that imbalance and correct it and then now you have cpus being utilized really well right so that's the other benefit you you not only save costs but you are now utilizing your cpus really well right so that's that's the main benefit here now this is uh, you know a sample cost reduction right with with memory tiering right what we see here is on the and this is a real configuration that we use from uh, one of our oem partners right on the left hand side you see that um, there isn't a tier and this is pure dram right and it's simple math i mean you see that if you remove half of uh, some of the dram capacity half of the dram capacity on the right you see that you know now you are ending up using saving a lot of costs right and we can see that with um, we we actually started seeing that with uh, when we did intel optane but unfortunately optane is gone and you know now we are coming up with new schemes for uh, doing memory tiering so um, i i'll definitely mention a few things a uh, few upcoming you know products that we are launching with uh, memory tiering so um, the other thing that uh, vmware is working on cxl right cxl actually is just perfect for us because you know it gives us direct access to the device right so no more dma no more physical you know pci transactions right so now um, with cxl protocol the cpu can directly access memory within your device even if it's external even if it's uh, pci like connection uh, uh, oriented right so now you have cxl devices that are, that look like pci devices but that the cpu can directly access right so now you don't have the additional latency of doing dma and you know transferring the data and all that so now cxl gives you that ability and um, on the right you see some of the reasons why vmware is uh, good for this right is because you know we have a extensive experience we have dealt with vmotion because vmotion is all about page tracking etc right and um, 
uh, we, we don't require any configuration changes. So what that means is that you just plug in this device and uh, ESX, one of the ESX versions will support memory tiering, the upcoming version and you are all set. All you need to invest on is this additional device and enable memory tiering and that's it. No additional license costs, it's available with ESX, right? So all you need to do is enable memory tiering and you get this extra capacity, right? But one caveat, right, is there will be some performance degradation. Nothing is free, right? I mean, uh, you all, it's probably obvious, right? But VMware will do its best. It will do memory tiering. It will make sure that, you know, the pages are swapped appropriately and you get the uh, hotter pages in the DRAM and colder are moved. So we will actively do that and ensure that in the application's performance don't suffer, right? Um, so we are doing a lot in the CXL ecosystem um, and we are working very closely with all major memory vendors, right? Including, you know, some of the big names. So um, some of the core improvements that, uh, that we are getting with, um, or some of the value that we are getting with software memory tiering and CXL, right, is we are looking into TCO. Obviously, you know, I mentioned costs and so TCO is a big benefit, right? And uh, increased capacity and bandwidth. So what happens is, you know, for a lot of the applications workloads, you, um, customers are limited by how much they can expand on their bandwidth, right? Because if you look at an AMD server, for example, AMD has limited memory channels and uh, limited DIMM capacity. So if you want to use, you know, lower capacity DIMMs and you need additional bandwidth, CXL can provide that additional bandwidth. It's sim similar to a PCI-5. Um, you also can improve the CPU core utilization, which I demonstrated with the graphs. Um, and you can improve OPEX. So there is one other product that is coming with CXL. It's based on an accelerator. So with the accelerator, what we are hoping to do is introduce some programmability so that we can do things like vMotion, right? vMotion is important for a lot of customers. So the acceleration can speed up vMotion. And uh, as the product evolves, as the accelerator evolves, because it is programmable, we can start putting more value into that accelerator. Uh, like things like, you know, how do you do um, compression and dedupe or, you know, offload encryption, some of the security features, etc. And it reduces failure probability. Um, and I mentioned, you know, memory tracking, scrubbing. So a lot of our customers uh, talk about, you know, how they encountered memory failures, right? So this can help with that. So, uh, oops. Um, some of the deployment options I want to talk about is, um, you know, the first case is about memory expanders and then we, we have something with uh, slower, inexpensive tier, which is similar to the NVMe tier, but it's CXL. Um, our, the next release, which is 80U3, we are coming out with um, NVMe based tiering. So NVMe is higher latency, right? I mean, it won't give the same performance as CXL, but for a lot of the customers, if you offload, you know, just 20% of your memory, you will still get good savings, right? And then uh, we will be using software tiering. So again, you know, absolutely zero changes, but you will still see memory benefits, I mean, cost benefits. And then um, we'll be looking into pooling also, right? And memory disaggregation, etc. So in summary, right, um, we have been working closely with Intel. So there is one more um, vendor I want to mention, Samsung. So we have been working very closely with Samsung too, right? And Samsung is the uh, vendor that is actually, uh, you know, working with us very closely on the accelerator solution. So we are using, uh, they are going to be providing the FPGA and the entire, you know, uh, card that will actually provide the memory acceleration. And um, 
you know, the one of the core value is, is um, I mean, your workloads are changing, the nature of your workloads are changing because of, uh, you know, some of the transformations that are happening, the new type of workloads that you are running. So, memory tiering will help with that. And then, um, you know, some of the performance results, even um, Sudhir shared some of them, they show that, you know, memory tiering can reduce can result in, you know, consistent performance. I mean, we, we won't let you suffer um, uh, with your application performance, right? So, memory tiering will bring the scale, right? And the whole goal is to not uh, introduce newer operations and, you know, newer configurations and make it really hard and painful for customers, right? The idea is to make it seamless idea is to integrate it and make it part of the core ESX. So these changes are part of the ESX kernel and all you need to do is invest on the hardware and configure and just you know say that you enable memory tiering and the rest will be taken care of behind the scenes and you, you just keep doing the same things you have been doing. Run the same applications you have been running three years ago and that's it. Thanks. Any, any questions? Yes. Thank you, thank you.